Hey everyone. A question I've been getting a lot recently is whether traditional Monte Carlo software can be used to generate risk-based guardrails. To answer this question directly, yes, it can be done. And I've even written about how to do it on a step-by-step -step basis. But I want to take a second today and talk about this approach and why, although it can be done, I would ultimately advise against it. Now, before we dive too deep into this, I think it'd be helpful to explain what risk-based guardrails are. Guardrails are strategies, such as Guyton Clinger's guardrails or Kitsis's ratcheting safe withdrawal rate, that were originally proposed around distribution rates. Let's look at a very simple example. Suppose you adopt a simple strategy of starting your retirement spending out at a distribution rate of 5%. We'll give someone an inflation adjustment each year, but to put guardrails in place to keep the plan on track, we might say that distributions will be cut if the distribution rate rises to 6%, perhaps back to a 5% target, and distributions will be increased if the distribution rate falls to 4%, again, perhaps back to a 5% target. This keeps the long-term distribution rates at reasonable levels by determining in advance when spending cuts or increases would be called for. One major issue with these types of distribution rate-driven strategies, however, is that a 5% distribution rate is less risky at age 90 than it is at age 65. Even more problematic in practice, however, is that almost no one actually takes distributions from a retirement portfolio in this consistent of a fashion. Distribution rates can, and often do, fluctuate significantly in retirement. Justin Fitzpatrick and myself have referred to one common distribution pattern as the retirement distribution hatchet. With a hatchet-shaped distribution pattern, portfolio distribution rates tend to be higher in the earlier years of retirement, while Social Security or pension income might be deferred into the future. However, once these income sources kick in, portfolio distribution rates drop significantly. If you are trying to smooth out your income across your retirement, it's not uncommon to see, say, 8% portfolio distributions in the early years that might fall to 2% portfolio distribution rates once Social Security kicks in. For this reason, distribution rate guardrails are almost never useful in real-world context. But this is where risk-based guardrails come in. Rather than focusing on distribution rates, we can instead set our guardrails around overall risk levels that look at income from all sources. And this is where tools like Monte Carlo simulation can be useful in evaluating overall risk. Suppose instead of distribution rates, we set guardrails around the following plan probability of success levels. Target an initial probability success of 90%, increase spending if probability of success rises to 99%, and decrease spending if probability of success falls to 70%. What's awesome about this approach is that now all the issues related to distribution rates have been dealt with. We can build a plan specific to whatever someone's portfolio, income sources, and plan spending looks like and set guardrails around that overall risk level, hence the name, risk-based guardrails. Now, in practice, I think this is how many retirees and financial advisors actually use Monte Carlo software. They set spending initially at a level that seems reasonable, and then they suggest increasing or decreasing spending as probability of success levels get too high or too low. Before we jump into how to actually develop guardrails using traditional Monte Carlo software, however, we should also address one of the major advantages of a guardrails approach, which is actually defining, in advance, both the portfolio dollar amount that would trigger a change and the corresponding increase or decrease in spending if that guardrail is hit. Without getting too into the weeds, imagine we have a retiree with a $1 million retirement portfolio. Furthermore, Assume that their total income, including portfolio income and other income sources, is initially recommended to be sustainable at a level of $8,000 per month with inflation adjustments over time. Now, let's assume that given the total risk levels we're using, this individual's portfolio guardrails are $1.2 million for when they get an increase in their spending and $700,000 for when a reduction in spending would be called for. Moreover, we could solve for what that spending adjustment would be at the time and determine that the recommended spending would be, say, an increase of $800 per month if that upper guardrail is hit, or decreased by $500 a month if the lower guardrail is hit. A key here is really putting all the guardrails into dollar values rather than these more abstract probability of success levels. Imagine the peace of mind this could give a retiree. If the market starts declining, this individual now knows that, first, a cut in spending isn't even recommended, until their portfolio falls all the way to $700,000. And second, even if the portfolio falls all the way to $700,000, then the suggested spending decline is only $500 per month. Having a plan like this in place in advance can provide a lot of peace of mind 
relative to just blindly watching portfolio values and probability of success levels fall. So with that background out of the way, let's go back to the original question. Instead of using specialized tools like Income Lab that have been built to easily provide risk-based guardrails, could you instead use traditional Monte Carlo simulation tools to set guardrails? As I already mentioned, the easiest way to do this would be to keep your spending on track by targeting an initial probability of success level and then increasing or decreasing spending if the upper or lower probability of success guardrails are hit. In my opinion, while this is a guardrails approach to keeping spending on track, it's missing the massive communication and peace of mind benefits that come from expressing guardrails in dollar terms in advance. So is there a way to solve for these guardrails in advance? Well, yes, we can. I've documented this process in a Kitsis article that I'll link to below, but we'll also walk through the process here. Essentially, what we need to do first is define our guardrails parameters and then go through a process of guess and checking using traditional Monte Carlo tools to find the dollar values that would flesh out those guardrails. So let's take a look at what this could look like. Let's say we're using the same probability of success guardrails mentioned previously in this video. An initial 90% probability of success target, a 70% probability of success lower guardrail, and a 99% probability of success upper guardrail. So the first step in this process is simply building out our plan in our Monte Carlo software, and then solving for the spending level that gives us a 90% probability of success at the current portfolio balance. Again, just for the sake of simplicity and continuity, let's assume that these numbers are the $1 million portfolio and an initial spending level of $8,000 per month after taxes to arrive at a 90% probability of success. This covers the first calculations needed for our guardrails. Next, let's look at our lower guardrail. The first thing we'll want to solve for is the portfolio value that brings the current probability of success level down to 70%. So we'll guess and check, keep putting in some values until we solve for this amount. And again, let's assume that this value ends up being $700,000. Now, we've defined our lower guardrail in dollar terms, and our next step is to solve for the spending adjustment at this lower guardrail. So here we'll keep our new portfolio balance at $700,000, assuming that is where the portfolio was fallen. And then we'll start adjusting our spending level to get back to our target probability of success. There are different ways to define the adjustment target, but let's keep things simple here and assume that we want to target a level of 95%, just like we did initially. So now we start cutting our after-tax spending until we get back to a 95% probability of success. Let's assume we guess and check until we find the new level of $7,500 per month, which corresponds to a $500 per month cut in spending. Now, we've completed our lower guardrail. We've determined the level that triggers a spending cut and what that spending cut would be all in dollar terms using a traditional Monte Carlo tool. So now we're ready to repeat that same process for the upper guardrail. Now let's reset our spending to the $8,000 per month after taxes amount, and then start guess and checking with portfolio balances that raise the probability of success up to 99%. Let's assume we guess and check until we arrive at our value of $1.2 million for our upper guardrail. Now we'll keep this portfolio value at 1.2 million, but let's start adjusting our spending up until we're back at a 90% probability of success. So here, we'll guess and check until we arrive at our level of $8,800 per month, which would correspond to an $800 per month increase in spending. And there we go. Now we've completed all of our calculations to define both our upper and lower guardrails. We've used a traditional Monte Carlo tool to actually build a risk-based guardrails plan. So at this point, should we disregard specialized software and just use traditional Monte Carlo software to build risk-based guardrails? Personally, if you believe in using risk-based guardrails, I just can't see a good argument for trying to do this for more than just a one-off exercise. I want to be clear about my conflict of interest here as an advisor to Income Lab, but I hope walking through that example helps make the issue here self-evident. It's incredibly labor-intensive to do this guess and checking in a traditional Monte Carlo tool and not scalable at all. Furthermore, not only is this labor intensive the first time you set guardrails, but you would need to repeat this process for every client and every plan that you have on an ongoing basis. That's just a crazy amount of work. When there are tools out there that can automate the calculation of guardrails, automate the updating of guardrails, and even ongoing plan management to see where an advisor's clients are at and provide notifications when guardrails are hit. Now, let's say a tool comes out that helps automate some of these calculations using traditional Monte Carlo software. Does that change the situation at all? Now, certainly it lowers the management burdens a bit, but I want to point out another benefit of specialized tools 
which is the actual simulation and testing of guardrail strategies to determine an appropriate guardrail strategy in the first place. With a tool like Income Lab's Retirement Stress Test, we can actually illustrate how guardrail strategies perform through some of the hardest markets in history, such as the Great Depression, stagflation, and the financial crisis. We haven't gotten deep into the weeds on guardrails parameters here, but you can pick different guardrail strategies that have significantly different levels of risk. Some strategies may be very conservative with very low levels of future spending decrease risk. Other strategies may be aggressive with higher income now, but more risk than future income could be decreased. Furthermore, once you account for individual circumstances, such as factors we noted regarding the retirement distribution hatchet, different income sources, and all of that, a high-risk guardrail strategy for one person may be a low-risk guardrail strategy for another. So no one strategy is right for all clients. You really need to actually see how a given strategy is going to perform to determine what is right for a given retiree. And that's not something you can do at all using a traditional Monte Carlo tool, nor is it something that these companies could easily implement. The analytics driving that simulation are far more difficult and complex and just can't be easily replicated in a traditional Monte Carlo simulation tool. So I hope that helps provide a little more perspective on the question of how you can develop a risk-based guardrails plan in a traditional Monte Carlo tool, but why ultimately I would strongly advise against doing so if you believe in risk-based guardrails as a planning approach. But what do you think? Have you used traditional planning software to put together a risk-based guardrails plan? Share a comment below. If you're liking this content, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.